is number nine. Right, so nine has, so the first thing I want you to do is change negative exponents to positive exponents. That's the first thing I want you to do. And how do we do that? Uh, hang on a second, here we go. So, I'm gonna write a big over here, we're doing number nine. So four stays, that's gonna stay because it's positive exponent, positive exponent. And again, everything else is going to multiply, okay? So even though you don't see a multiplication sign, there is one. And three stays, but the eight to the negative fourth power, we're gonna make it positive, and to make it positive, we're gonna put it in the number. B to the negative third power, also, I'll turn positive, and go like this. Now, from here, let's simplify it. Let's look at our coefficients, right? We have a four over here and a three over here. And if you multiply, we get 12, so we put that Coefficients always come first, okay? Then I'm gonna highlight, we have a to the third and a to the fourth, so think about that for a second. Let me just write, so a to the third is the same thing as eight, eight, eight times a times a, and a to the fourth is a times a times a, four times. If we simplify, remember, this simplifies, that simplifies, that simplifies. Where do we have an a left over? We're gonna have an a left over in the denominator. I mean, you don't have to do this step once you understand it, Right? So we took care of the 4, we took care of the 3, 4 times 3, we take care of the a. So now look at b to the second power and b to the third power. Well, on the top we have b times b. And at the bottom, the expand, expanded form, we have b times b times b. So think about it again. If you were to simplify the b's, where would you have leftovers? Well, this simplifies, this simplifies, and again, we would have 1 at the bottom. So my final answer, a little bit prettier, would be 12 over a times b. And that's our final answer, simplify. No negative exponents, and uh, that's it. 12. 12, and again, let me just write it a little bigger. It's 2x to the second power, all raised to the negative fourth power. So, first thing I want you to do, okay, is multiply that ex outside exponent times every exponent inside. And then, remember, the 2 doesn't have an exponent that we see, but there is an invisible one, and I'll put it Let's take care of, of that. So the 2 will be raised, and again, 1 times negative 4 is negative 4, times, and the x, we multiply the 2 and negative 4, we get negative 8. Now, we know that there are negative exponents, so therefore, I guess, when I said in class, we're, we're traveling going on, we're going to change that to positive exponents, and in order to do that, they both have to go to the denominator. So 2 to the negative 4 will go to the denominator and be 2 to the 4th power. An x to the negative 8th power is going to go to the denominator and be x to the positive 8th power. And again, what's on top? 1. Can we take it a step further and simplify it? Yeah, the 1's not going to change, but 2 to the 4th we can easily do. 2, 4, 8, 16. That's 16 x to the 8th power. Okay. Uh, next one, uh, let's see what we have to do. This so next one is 13, 9, 13 19, 25. 13, 19, that's just 13. Again, 13. Let me write it a little bigger. 4 times r to the 0 power raised to the 4. Well, again, let's take care. Let's put exponents where there are none. Well, there's a, an invisible one. Let me just make it invisible. And let's multiply. So it's going to be this exponent times this exponent and this exponent times this exponent. So we have 4 and we have the r. Let's figure out the exponents. Well, 4 times 1. It's going to be 4, and that's how I got that 4. And 4 times 0 is going to be 0. Let's take it a step further. 4 to the 4th power is 256, because it's 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. And what's r to the 0 power? Remember, anything raised to the 0 power is 1, so we're going to write a 1 here. And what's 256 times 1? It's just 256. 19. Where's 19? Here we go. Okay, let me write it just a little bit bigger. 2, x to the 4th, y to the negative 3rd, all that raised to the negative 1. So I don't want to deal with this negative exponent that's outside the parentheses, so I'm going to multiply. So let me put 1 over here. So that, what I'd like you to do first is multiply that negative 1 times every exponent inside the parentheses. So we have a 2, 
an x and a y, and let's figure out the exponent. So negative 1 times negative 1 here is negative 1. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. And negative 1 times negative 3 is 3. So that's what I Now we have negative exponents, so we know automatically we're going to have a fraction because we have to change some of these exponents to positive, and in order to do that, these guys who are in the numerator will go to the denominator. So 2 to the negative 1 power is going to come to the denominator. Let me write 2 to the first power. Done. x to the negative 4 also comes down and becomes x to the positive 4. y cubed or y to the third power is positive, so nothing's going to happen. And that's my final answer. Let me just make it a little prettier. y to the third, and at the bottom, 2 to the first is just 2, x, 4. And that's our final answer. 25. Okay. Write it a little bigger. 3 times m to the negative fourth over m cubed. Well, let's get rid of that negative exponent. So, again, here's my fraction. Let's take care of each one separately. The coefficient 3 stays. Nothing happens to it. m to the negative 4 is going to come down. And I'm going to write it here at the denominator with a 4. m cubed, well, that stays, right? It's already down. So it just stays because it's not negative. So it stays where it is in the denominator. Now, can I do something about this? Yes, I can. I can make that a little prettier. The 3 doesn't change, but m to the third power times m to the fourth, if you look at the product rule we did yesterday, when we're multiplying and the bases are the same, in this case they're both m, we can just simply add the exponents and we get m to the second. And that's my answer to that one. Okay? So 26 and 28. So I'll need two more. 26, let me just write it a bigger. I'm going to put a 1 automatically here because x to the 4, y to the negative 4, z to the negative 3rd over. So there's definitely some traveling over here. z to the 4. Okay. So let's take care of my coefficients. It's 2 over 3, so if you think about it, the fraction 2 over 3, well, let's just leave it as it is. I can't simplify. So 2 over 3 stays as 2 over 3. They both have positive exponents, so there's no changes to that. Done. Let me change colors and let me do the x. x to the fourth. x to the fourth stays as it is. x to the second at the denominator stays as it is. Right? They're both positive, so nothing's going to happen to them. The y's. y to the negative four. That one, we have to make it positive, so that's going to travel to the denominator and becomes y to the positive four. y to the negative third, again, is negative, so that's going to, well, it can't travel to the denominator, but it will travel to the numerator and becomes positive. The z's, z to the negative third goes to the denominator and becomes positive three. And the z to the fourth power is already a z to the fourth power, stays where it is. Can we do some, come in, come in, come in. Uh, uh, you are the one who's running the investment? Yes. Uh, when is it today? Yes. After school, 2.30, meet me in the lobby. Okay. Uh, do you have like a form? form that you didn't fill out yet? I yeah. do, but I don't know how you're going to have your parents fill it out for today. Wait, but it starts at what time? 2.30. 2.30? Yep, here, take one. If your mom happens to be outside, have her sign, and then come join us. We'll be in this room. This room? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it? Yeah. But you need to have that filled out. Yeah, so I can't call them if I don't want this room. Yes, you can't, because obviously can next really Wednesday. Late. Yeah, you can. That's okay. okay. All right, thank you. No problem. Bye. See ya. All right, so now we made everything, all, all, all our factors here have positive exponents. Now I can simplify. Okay? The two thirds, nothing's going to happen to them. We're done. But think about the x's. Right? So we have x to the fourth power on the top, and x to the second power. So if you think about it, it means that we have 4x's in the numerator, 2x's in the denominator. If we simplify this and this, simplify this and this, simplify to 1, and we're left with 2x's, but where? In the top. So we write x, and we're not going to write xx, we're going to write x to the second power. So my x's are done. The y's, think about it now. We have y to the third power on the top and y to the fourth power at the bottom. Where do I have my more y's, top or bottom? The bottom. How many more? One more. So. I'm going to do this anyway, so here are my three y's in the top and my four y's at the bottom. That goes away, that goes away, that goes away, and I have one y here at the bottom. Hopefully that makes sense. 
z to the third power and z to the fourth power, I mean, they're both in the denominator and they're being multiplied, right? So in this case, it's not about simplifying, but they're being multiplied. So remember, product rule, you multiply, the base are the same, you keep the base, and we add the exponent, 3 plus 4 is 7. And then we have, am I done, or is this, do we have one more? Oh, we have one more. And then 28, Let me write it a little bigger, 2 h cubed, j to the negative third, k to the fourth, and 3jk. Okay. Let's make everything positive, and then we deal with simplifying, okay? The 2 stays, the h to the third power will stay as it is, the j to the negative third comes down here. And I'll write it as a positive exponent. K to the fourth stays because it's a positive exponent, so we don't have to change. Let's look at the denominator. Three. Three stays because it has an exponent of a positive one, so that stays. J. There's a J there. Well, that's going to stay, and I'm going to put it right there. And we have a K, which also has, and these two, all, all three of them have positive exponents, so nobody travels. Done. Now let's think about simplifying. The two thirds. There's my two-thirds. I can't sim simplify that anymore. Let's do the h. Well, there's h cubed on the numerator. Is there any h's anywhere else? No. So h is done. j. Let's do the j. There's a j. They're both, both of them are in the denominator, so they're multiplying, right? j times j to the third power. Remember, there's a 1 here. When we multiply and the base are the same, we keep the base. What do we do with the exponent? We add and we get 4. k. Now the k, there's a k to the fourth on the numerator and k to the first power on the denominator. So it looks like this, right? There's four k's on the top and then one k at the bottom. They're being multiplied. They're, it's a fraction, right? So it's division. So this guy and this guy simplifies. Where do I have k's left over in the top or at the bottom? I have k's left over in the top. How many of them? Three. And then I'm going to express them as k to the third power. That's my final answer. Okay. That's it. Not that complicated. Okay.